And once more, welcome back everybody to Mechabellum, playing against apparently another Chinese players. I did play a lot of games pretty early because I'm currently on a uh, playcation. Starting with Mustang Marksman into Fang Phoenix. That is probably one of the best setups you can have initially. Um, unfortunately, uh, arc lights exist and invalidate my chaff and my mustangs alike, which is always painful. Um, my opponent's name translates to apparently helpless or helpless. I'm just... Huh? Huh? I don't understand the names of Chinese people. I can imagine two things. Either these names are kind of like roulette. Um, you kind of just roll a name for yourself, putting random letters and words together. But given how long the name is, I think that more than likely this is just a mistranslation. Unless the word helpless in Chinese is made up of however many letters that is. Um, the other explanation that I can imagine is that each and every Chinese player's name has some kind of super deep important story. And uh, that super deep important story is completely lost looking at nothing but the name. I am inclined to believe that, but I have no evidence in either direction. Unfortunately, my opponent gets the tower first, uh, gets the tower second, and that means he can just do waltz all over my marksmen. I do get one of the marksmen, but that's it. The MVP here were the arc lights, definitely. Underground threat for my opponent. I think I go for the electromag. Apparently he used it to reinforce. I guess that's valid. These Mustangs on either side would be doing not half bad. But I think they would still get overwhelmed. And they are definitely missing at the front line. He instantly goes for Arc Lights uh, with range here. Okay. I didn't remember that. But uh, that is going to tear my army apart. And since he's going to get to eat some Mustangs... Those arc lights should be picking up levels pretty quickly. I don't see a way that I win this fight here. Even without text, the arc lights are still going to take care of all of my chaff. I do make it a point, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. Picking up too much chaff in the earlier rounds when there's already arc lights here. But then again, I did not foresee that my opponent was using his supply specialist to go into that many arc lights that quickly. And instantly at range on top of him. So combat power this and that. I lose this round and not by a little bit. My opponent however has kind of revealed that his game plan may very well include some carry arc lights. I'm looking at this and asking myself what good are these units for to fight carry arc lights. He goes for typhoons. And what do I do? I go for the wasps, apparently. My opponent does have anti-aircraft ammunition, so I don't want to keep these wasps forever, I think. I sell the mustangs. At this point, they are just feeding XP, and they are not doing much. Well, th I say that, and then this is the unit with the most damage in the games currently. Uh, on my side, at least. My opponent probably has, yeah, like, even the units that have nowhere near um, as much of anything. As much time in the game. Uh, like this arc light. Well, actually, that was the one from the start. But it's... Uh, ah, forget it. I fumbled my way into Ascendance. I can't find a way out of again. Sucks. Anyway, Fortress Wasp is the name of the game for the moment. These fortresses are fat and I do add some additional marksmen. When I'm up against arc lights and potentially carry arc lights, he's putting levers on them. So yeah, the game plan has been revealed. Uh, I need something that can scale as well, and hopefully the fortress will make it so that I win this round. It's not like I have a lot of chaff clear here. Maybe some arc lights would have been a better investment, but at the same time, the wasps are putting in a good amount of work, and they are actually pretty good at cleaning up these level 1 crawlers. The other side has fallen, obviously. But there's nothing to shoot at me for now, and I think this is going to be a lot better of a tower time for me than for my opponent. Phoenixes have gone down. There isn't anything to compete with the wasps other than the fangs. 
And the Fangs are putting in a lot of work. He may yet win this. The question is, can the Marksman plink down all of these units in time? That Marksman survives. This is a shoot, uh, a shoot down. Or what's it called? A showdown. I guess shoot down isn't even a bad way to say it. However, the Marksman win and... Uh, well, Deployment Specialist, definitely a good pickup. Better than all of the other stuff, I think, in this particular situation. Neither me nor my opponent would want anything to do with Sledges right now, I think. Levels on some of the Marksmen, definitely good. The Wasps, I'm wondering if I can let them ride. My opponent has reacted violently, I think is the correct way to say it. He's going for four packs of Mustangs, all of them brand new, as you can see. No damage yet. And there's a few worlds where a Mustang squad doesn't get damage, at least a tiny bit, all round long. I am at this point abandoning this side. I don't see a way to fix this. And as my opponent goes for Quad Mustang in one round to counter a pack of level 3 Wasps, because there isn't much else that is countered by Mustangs here, um, I just go for a Vulcan. This is going to be a Marksman Vulcan kind of game. He is going for a charge shot, so despite seeing me going for fortresses and marksmen, he's not giving up on the carry arc blight plan just yet. But these are at most level 2 arc lights. They aren't doing all that much. I am trying to redirect these wasps to kinda move to the side and maybe come around from sort of the flank position to get something done. But honestly, this my opponent has to be really mad seeing that. Seeing that Vulcan. This Vulcan is going to eat. It is eating. It is killing all of these units. Look at it. It's doing top damage this round at least. There is still these carry arc lights and they are scary. And the tower is about to fall. But there's only one level 2 arc light left. And I'm getting the tower first. Unfortunately, the Vulcan has died, which means I very much so expect to lose this round. The Wasps have clearly outstayed their purpose here. But honestly, that Fortress Marksman Squad was putting it a good show. Not enough, unfortunately. But let's look at the state of the board after we see the unit drops. Oh, carry items. Sweet, sweet carry items. Tank production line, probably not even good here. I still pick it, apparently. In retrospect, I think I would have liked to pick something else instead. Maybe a damage item for the Vulcan would not have been a miss. I do throw the EMP down on this side. My opponent, that is why I like to pick up an early EMP, even though it's not doing anything in the early rounds in most cases. I can just drop that EMP when uh, every few rounds and my opponent has to think about it. If I pick it up in round 2, it comes back off cooldown in round 5 and there's a good amount of techs already invested. So he really has to think, am I going to shield here or am I not going to shield here? And depending on what happens, that could change the outcome of a round. In any case, I decide to hide a Vulcan behind a level tower. I was theorizing about things like that, if you could hide behind a tower if you get aggroed, but I guess this is without aggro, kinda similar. And then I just decide to drop more marksmen. I'm going full Vulcan marksmen here and it's hopefully going to be glorious. In round 5 my opponent is rapid resupplying. When the health bars look like this, what is he expecting to do? Is he expecting to win without any losses here? Ah, uh, maybe that's it. Maybe he just forgot to shield. That is most likely what it is. So he now wasted a lot of supply on shields and rapid resupplied to get them in the first place. That hurts. That is a very painful economic loss. I'm not even sure why he's shielding here. Am I going to push all of these units with rhinos or what did he expect? In the meantime, this Vulcan was not late enough. Um, I haven't done this strategy before. Actually, he's fighting level 3 crawlers and carry arc light, so he's not going to be able to take care of all of it. But he did significantly delay the opponent. 
And that means that I get to take out my entire opponent's side, save for one of these arc lights. Oh, never mind. That one goes down as well. Before he gets to take out my tower. And tower timing is definitely going to be in favor of me here. There is some carry arc lights with range and charge shot. They can compete with these, um, with these marksmen. And get some XP, but there simply is an absolute firing squad of marksmen. They can take care of these fangs in a significantly better time than marksmen usually can. Simply because there are so many of them. Oh, come on, how many times can I miss this? The 1.0. He's going into scorpions. Yeah, I can understand that. I think with units clumped up like that, Scorpions might just be better than Melters, and apparently he's thinking the same as I am. Stormcallers would also have been good, but leveled Stormcallers can easily be countered. I'm looking at other units, I think I'm looking at the Overlords here. No, I'm also looking at the Scorpion. If I were to play this again, maybe I would have picked the Overlords. He's once again reinforcing here, I guess that makes sense. If he drops the scrollers here, what are they going to accomplish? If he drops them here, the Vulcan is going to destroy them. Here they would be very annoying. So he could have done that, but at the same time, what are these marksmen going to do at the start of the round? They're shooting chaff anyway. I drop another Vulcan here in order to protect myself, and incendiary bombs, like if fire lands in this area, it's going to do so much. That Vulcan can even level. From one round, I think. I do decide to use my mobile beacon here. That should hopefully mean this Vulcan gets to eat all of these units, save for the carry arc lights and I guess the scorpions now. He did invest into f in total 4 scorpions with range. That is scary. That is going to shred fortresses like nothing. Honestly, that is quite amazing here for the moment. Uh, my opponent's board is looking crazy, but... My board is... I think my board is looking crazier. Incendiary bombs should do, be doing insane work here. You know, I never really thought about that, but staggering Vulcans and incendiary bombs might actually be a good strategy. Because it means that... Yeah, it means that uh, they fire at different times. And that potentially the chaff on one side has already been destroyed by the first Vulcan's incendiary bombs by the time the second one rolls around. Look at the amount of work fire is doing here. That Vulcan is too far to the rear to shoot these Mustangs. But look at the amount of work that has been put in. And now I have a squad of marksmen just ready to destroy. These have range, so they outrange these scorpions by a lot, and the carry arc lights as well. They just take no prisoners.